Hi, welcome to another lesson on how to draw Celtic knotwork. I'm your host, Jason Bellchamber. I just wanted to show you where I like to draw and take advantage of this nice sunny day in autumn. Right here's my gazebo, my little husky. This is where I like to draw. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a running Triskel pattern from a Pictish cross called the Rossi Prory Stone. It was found in the old burial ground of Rossi, according to Ian Fraser, before 1867 and now preserved within a private mortuary chapel. This large slab bears a cross on either face with complex imagery in phantasmagorical animals on the front. The reverse bears a hunting scene with the crescent and V-rod above a beast. What I'd like to show you is how to draw this Trillium Triskel variant. Have ready an eraser, a marker, a pencil, and your straight edge. Use your straight edge, trace on either line, turn it 90 degrees, and make one line of a grid, and start making your triangles, like so. Lightly score it with your pencil, because you're going to erase it after you trace through it. The Picts were the Celtic tribe that lived in northeast Scotland. And that is where I believe Celtic knotwork originated under the influence of the Irish Celtic tribe, the Picts, and the Saxons. Score a line in the center very lightly so you know where the middle is. Draw a long oval like so. in a wave pattern. What we're going to do is a variant of a classic Triskel design. But you're taking this knot, having it go up here, and then this knot go up here. So it's going to continue. So I'm going to show you how to draw the spine, and then we're going to mark it in with the marker. Start right at the halfway point here. And start drawing this pattern. You're going to alternate it. Like so. When you make the crossovers, try to keep them as far away from each cross as possible. And that gives the ribbon that you're going to draw even space and it will look pleasing to the eye as well. Once you practice on these ones, you're going to be able to tell how to do it infinitely. So this is the basis of your spine. Take your marker and start, start to alternate. Over, stop, over, Over, and then remember that one is under. Now you can trace over this. Or, another way to construct this, it's like so.
use, actually I'll use the pencil instead. Draw a line as thick as your ribbon over and under each spot. This is how you're going to erase it. This does take a lot of practice and this is one of the more complex knots. But once you practice it, it just finishes up so nice. your marker instead. This sort of spine you trace over. This one on this side however you're just going to move your marker around your spine and then erase the spine after you've done it. and then shade in the negative space. It's easiest to crosshatch first and then slowly build it up. So there's one. So what I'm going to have you do just follow along with a pencil and then mark over with a marker. However, I'm going to use a marker instead of both the pencil. So you alternate over, under, over, and then under, This one goes under and over, and this one goes over and then under when it reaches this ribbon. The cross that I was showing you from the Rossi Prairie estate is made out of sandstone, which is nice and soft to carve. But what the artist would have done is they would have scored it, likely with chalk, and then cut around the spine of their knot patterns. And there is a lot of knot patterns, which I'd like to demonstrate in upcoming lessons as well. start to see. Now what you're going to do is cross hatch one way, the negative space, like so. I'll just do these two right now. And then you cross hatch the other way. And that just brings the positive space to look like it pops right off of the page. It's all about fooling the eye into thinking this is a continuous knot, as well as almost a optical illusion. I think that this, the Celts were likely obsessed with Triskels because they 
are a reflection of the behavior of the sun and the moon. If you look at a moon when it's full and when it's new, it seems to stay new and full for three days. Same with the solstice. The summer solstice and the summer sun, we move around the sun and an ellipse. So it changes every day until you get to the bottom of those ellipses and that's on the solstices. So the sun seems to follow the same path closest to each solstice. So on the longest day and the shortest day, the sun seems to follow the same pattern. If you don't have a clock like the Celts and the Picts did, there, we'll just fatten this up a bit. And of course, the sun and the moon dictate over the year how well your crops are going to be and how well they're going to last. There, so that's that one pattern. Now, just to finish it off, you're just going to want to erase this once your ink dries. Join you next time. Thanks very much.